Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. We're gonna have a great show today. My guest, Dr. Bob Taylor from Lone Tree, Wyoming, and we're gonna talk today about what he does in production of organic beef. It's really an incredible story and the journey that's taken him to organic beef production. I think you're gonna learn a lot. Thanks for joining us here today on Doc Talk. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do. Every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. Closed captioning brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. This segment brought to you by the new Hired Hand Portable Cow Sprayer. For more information, visit cowsprayer.com. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Bob Taylor. And it's a pleasure to have Dr. Taylor here on the show from Wyoming, uh, formerly Colorado. Spent a lot of time in that front range and, and yeah. different areas. A beautiful part of the country. He's a veterinarian. It's doing some pretty special things with beef production, and, and I thought it'd be great to have him on the show, kind of share your story and, and talk to people about organic beef production. Good, good. Well, thank you, Dan. I enjoy being here. Look forward to having a, having a minute to maybe visit a little bit. We're in southwest Wyoming. My family and I, we uh, raise and produce organic beef cattle. And one thing I wanted to mention for sure is that we're not elitist. We think we're just fulfilling a small niche in the demand for beef cattle in this country. And we've enjoyed it. It's been a transformative process. We've been at it now for almost 10 years. And every day we learn something, I think, that makes it more unique or more challenging as we, as we go along. Yeah, and, and I think that it's important for people to understand that it's important that we fill all the different niches within the beef industry, because if we don't, they'll, they'll go eat chicken. That's exactly right. <laughs> or they'll, they'll buy their uh, organic meat from Australia or somewhere else. And so it's yeah. important that we have a presence in this country, I believe, because there is a need and there's an ongoing demand for that kind of product. Tell me how you got started. Well, really it was my daughter, uh, who I say is the brains of the operation, convinced me about five years ago that it's something that we should look at. We're about sustainability and trying to create a lasting legacy in the ranching business with our family. and. We were stimulated by the increase in value that you can demand from an organic product. And so that's really what triggered our uh, immersion into the organic industry. So you were looking at that sale price of the final product. Yes, we were. And, 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 and you know, that, as you know, being in the cattle business, it, it, it waxes and wanes over time. But we were captured by the, the higher premium that you can demand if you're all organic. Yeah, and I think that, that uh, you know, Obviously, you've been through different trials and tribulations. Um, are the costs a lot more or, you know, I mean, those types of things as well? Well, the, the, the costs are greater. And one of the things that we've yet to talk about is just animal health and disease prevention. And so I said earlier, if it's, if it's made and it's a vaccine, we're probably going to get approval to use it because it's really about maintaining optimum health. So we figure somewhere around 20% additional cost in producing an organic animal. Part of that is all of the ground and the hay that the cows eat has to be produced organically and then we've got to maintain our organic 
uh, certification, and then the, the, the health matters are really important. And so that all comes to about a 20% increase, I think, in, in the cost of producing a pound of beef. Well, it's outstanding. This is going to be a lot of fun, folks, to, for us to watch together and, and visit with Dr. Bob Taylor. We're going to take a break, and when we come back from, from the commercial break, we're going to talk a little bit more with Dr. Taylor about some of the things that they're doing to maximize health in their cow herd. We'll talk about other things such as labeling and things that are associated with organic, questions that you've probably had and never got the answer from. Dr. Bob Taylor, more after these messages. This Prevention Works Minute, brought to you by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica, Inc. Hey folks, Dr. Dan here. Thanks for joining me on our Prevention Works Minute. When we start to think about preventing disease, a lot of times we think about the reason why animals get sick, either an overwhelming dose of a pathogen or a suppressed immune system. When we have a su suppressed immune system, most of the time that's due to stress. And one of the things that I really focus on with our feedlot crews and, and stalker crews is low stress cattle handling. I think it's vitally important that cattle are handled and acclimated in a, in a sense that we make sure that we do not increase the level of stress when we're handling. Make sure that they're exposed to you before you ship those animals, making sure that they understand the commands and that they're acclimated so that when we ship calves to the feedlot or when we bring calves off the truck at the feedlot, we're practicing good low stress cattle handling will increase the, the immune response because we decrease the amount of stress that we see in those calves. And we all know that prevention works. Say this is a calf that's been run through the chute a few too many times. Going through the chute stresses cattle, causing them not to eat like they should. Luckily, Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ provides proven protection against key respiratory diseases in a single shot with just one trip through the chute. Talk to your veterinarian about Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ, and soon your calves will relax and eat like a whole different animal. Do your cattle struggle with pink eye, BRD, or another disease? Contact Newport Laboratories for a customized solution. Our custom-made vaccines are produced using the specific diseases found in your area. These USDA licensed vaccines offer potential cost savings on vaccine and labor. Contact your veterinarian or Newport Laboratories the next time your cattle are in need of a custom solution. Newport Laboratories custom made vaccine because every situation is different. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Supply. This segment brought to you by the new hired hand portable cow sprayer. For more information, visit cowsprayer.com. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with my friend and colleague, Dr. Bob Taylor. And we've been talking about organic beef production. And, and I think the one thing that, that you'll find pretty quick is Dr. Taylor is a very humble man that is here to share with us about something that, that he has enjoyed doing and that he enjoys producing, working with his cattle. Uh, the challenges of producing organically raised beef is, is, are, are things that he's, that he's taking on and, and he's doing it in a manner in which I think everybody should handle their day-to-day -day business. It's not a, we're better than you, we're just different. And we're, we're, we're moving forward and we're all, for me, if you're in the beef industry, I'm for you. Um, <laughs> you know, and, and, and we want everybody to be successful. Yep. And oh, so, so talk to me a little bit about what are some of the differences you see in, in an organic herd production-wise that, well, that you guys are. Well, I think one of the things in both being veterinarians, you know, we were trained uh, to, to keep animals healthy. And so for us, it's extremely important that that happen because if a calf, for example, develops, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, diarrhea as, as an infant and we end up having to give them an antibiotic, they're immediately excluded from the organic program. And so it's really about maintaining optimum health, which you and I both enjoy because Absolutely. that's the way we were trained. You know, we begin literally the day that the calf is born. Uh, we go out and we'll ear tag uh, the calf. 
Uh, we can vaccinate them at that point or give them a toxoid for some of the problems that we have in, in uh, southwest Wyoming. And then that's, and that calf then is tagged back to the mother with the birth date so that we can verify in her gestation period when that calf was born. And it just follows through all the way through their production life that we're very aware of what they eat, but we're also aware of any disease risk or possibilities. And so we're, we're prudent about the use of vaccine. We believe in the vaccination products. Uh, we're using some new things like Amplimune and, and uh, Zelnate uh, as, as uh, immune stimulants, if you will, uh, in an effort to not use antibiotics. I'm a big user of uh, activated charcoal for diarrhea in young calves, and it works great. And it's, it's a very safe product, but it's stuff like that that we use in an effort to keep them organically certified. Cool. So, so when, you, when you're saying that, you know, obviously you're using some things that might be some oldies but goodies. Um, exactly. You know, yeah, and going well. back to, you know, I, my granddad, as you and I discussed before the show, is, you know, I'm a third generation veterinarian, and back in 1938, he didn't have some of these tools. That's right. But yeah. some of the tools you're bringing back, like activation charcoal and things like that, he dang sure did, and he utilized no, them. That's exactly right. And, you know, yogurt is the other thing, because in these calves, when they develop really bad E. coli diarrhea or whatever, reestablishing that gut flora with some good old fashioned yogurt is, uh, or cow's milk is pretty darn good, so yeah. <laughs> what are some of the things you see uh, in the cows? That, that uh, would be some of, the, just thinking some of the general things that maybe we wouldn't think that, that, that are some of, maybe, or maybe there's not, maybe it's more of a calf oriented. Well, you know, I, I mean really, calf health begins with cow health. And so if you have a healthy cow, she's going to probably have a healthy calf. We're, we're, pretty, um, uh, we're, we're pretty committed that if a cow doesn't bring a calf to branding, she's probably not going to be with us the next year. So gotcha. we want a mid-frame cow that's a dang good mother that's going to mother that calf and help it grow. Cool. Let's take a break. Folks, when we come back, more with Dr. Bob Taylor on organic beef ranching in Wyoming. Some call it a come from behind victory, an unlikely win, a reversal of fortune, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. This is our moment, our victory dance, because we choose confidence. We choose Zuprevo for BRD treatment. Ask your veterinarian to prescribe Zuprevo. Zuprevo is a fast acting, long lasting BRD treatment that you can count on to get the job done. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprevo from Merck Animal Health. Still using ineffective fly tags on your cattle? It's time to eliminate fleas, ticks, flies, lice, and parasites, and at the same time, give them a shiny coat, making them more valuable. One fly tag can cost $250, but you can do this all for about a nickel a head. Introducing the Cow Sprayer, designed and built in the U.S. The Cow Sprayer is portable, solar-powered, and comes with a 25 or 40-gallon tank. Eliminate parasites for about $0.05 cents a head with the Cow Sprayer. Cowsprayer.com in the springtime, cattlemen need to be thinking of preventing important diseases like pink eye. Pink eye prevention includes management factors like good fly control, pasture management, along with a good vaccination program. Eyesight from AgriLabs has broad efficacy coverage as its origin from eight different field isolates of Moraxella bovis. It is safe, smooth, highly syringable, safe with young calves and pregnant cows, and provides superior protection against pink eye. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson and Dr. Bob Taylor here. We're talking about the niche market of organic beef production here in the United States, which is an important niche for the beef industry. And, and we keep reminding ourselves, it's not an elitist attitude. It's, 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 just, it's just another way to raise beef and a, another way to raise cattle and to keep people engaged in our industry. Uh, you know, it's, I think some of the things that you've explained to me have been very, very interesting, especially when it comes to labeling. Because okay. everybody sees a all natural, no antibiotics, just something slapped on their gluten free. Right, right. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it just gets to that point where you're just kind of bombarded. So talk to me about what 
is kind of an official label or, or how those come about? Well, I, I think the first thing is for every consumer to understand there's so much false information out there. And as you said, slapping a label on something, uh, uh, many times that will suffice for the mom or the husband who's going in and, and, and buying a product. But as you know from being a scientist, that really it's based on fact and truth. And so, uh, and hopefully this will change over time so that if we say, for example, antibiotic free or grass finished or no, not never, has some meat, okay? In the organic industry, there's a lot of meat because there are federal standards that are handed down to the organic producer. And then we get to pay for the privilege of having an independent uh, inspector come out and they'll, they'll call today say, hey, we're in the neighborhood, can we come tomorrow? Well, sure, we'd love to have you. And so they really do hold your feet to the fire in terms of what that organic label needs. And we, if we're gonna continue with the labeling business in the American cattle industry, those other labels need to have the same kind of scrutiny and reliability and, and proof that it's happening. Uh, yeah, I think it's important for the longevity of the label. Exactly. Because the last thing you want to do is have false representation that draws all labels down. That's right. And, and so I, you know, I used to be the opposite. I used to sit there and say, why do we have to do all That's this? Right. Don't they trust us? And, That's right. and, and things of that nature. But it really gets back to if I'm a person that's producing organic beef, although I know you say in jest that you get to pay the, you pay the privilege. Right, right. Of, yeah. it, it is about brand integrity and holding people's feet to the fire so that you can propagate it. The, the, the other thing that I think is important is that not just for organic, but for every part of the meat industry is that it, it's got to be something that you'd serve your grandmother or your children. And we've got to have that confidence and the consumer's got to have that confidence that that's what we're doing. And I think that's really extremely important for our future as we go forward. Yeah, and, and regardless of whether it's conventional or natural, organic, whatever, whatever type of beef, you know, if, if we have a downfall in one area, it's a downfall for all. Absolutely. No, it affects all of us. Exactly. And I see things such as, you know, uh, mishandling of antibiotics and and different things to that nature and and it really gets back to preventative medicine biosecurity yes whenever I even in a conventional herd if I use an antibiotic I, I feel like a failure well as veterinarians we do feel that way because we went to school to learn to maintain health and that's our that's our mantra that's our gold standard yeah so for sure you got it all right folks Thanks for watching Doc Talk. We're going to take a break and we'll come back with a wrap up with Dr. Bob Taylor. Did you know long range planning through the checkoff can help keep your business profitable? To successfully pass on cattle operations from one generation to the next, it's important to promote beef and keep farms and ranches profitable. Your beef checkoff helps do that. I'm Tom Perrier. Our ranch is called Dale Banks Angus. Dale Banks is not a person, but it's a place. Uh, this ranch was started by my uh, great-grandfather. He came from Northwest England, and his farm there was called Dale Banks, and so he called his ranch here in the Flint Hills Dale Banks. The beef checkoff today has fulfilled a lot of needs that our industry has had over the years. Uh, we were very involved in trying to get the beef checkoff passed back in the 70s and early 80s because we saw the need then and the beef checkoff I think has fulfilled a lot of those needs. I think some of the, the biggest bonuses that we've gotten from the beef checkoff in the last 20 years have been twofold, both in the research uh, phase of the industry, one being the Beef Quality Assurance Program that showed us just how much money we could capture by simply doing things like moving the injection sites from the hip and, and rump of the animal up to the neck. 
where we had less high valued cuts, that drove millions of dollars into our industry. The other thing that our beef industry did about 15 years ago was uh, embark on new product development. Things like the flat iron steak and things that used to get ground into hamburger and low, other low valued cuts today are sold for a premium. And that too, just like the Beef Quality Assurance Program, has driven uh, huge dollars into our industry that we all get to share. Matt's the primary uh, driver behind the operation right now and uh, he's the sixth generation and his children will be the seventh generation. I hope our kids are better at telling our beef industry's story. I think the last several years the Beef Checkoff has shown us how to do that better. They've given us some tools to do that. So we need to do a better job of telling the wonderful story that we have and I hope our kids can continue to do that. It takes vision, dedication, hard work. It takes knowing who you can trust. At Zinpro Corporation, we have more industry-endorsed research behind our trace minerals than any other company. Proof that our patented performance minerals help improve overall animal health and performance. Lots of companies make claims. At Zinpro, we generate results. Still using ineffective fly tags on your cattle? It's time to eliminate fleas, ticks, flies, lice, and parasites, and at the same time, give them a shiny coat, making them more valuable. One fly tag can cost $250, but you can do this all for about a nickel a head. Introducing the Cow Sprayer, designed and built in the U.S. The Cow Sprayer is portable, solar-powered, and comes with a 25 or 40-gallon tank. Eliminate parasites for about five cents a head with the Cow Sprayer. Cowsprayer.com it's easy to spot the man who uses Synanthic. With lower volume and less waste, Synanthic steps up your deworming routine. Get more deworming with less dewormer at Synanthic.com. Beringer Ingelheim Vet Medica Inc. knows the importance of beef quality assurance and asks you to step up and get certified. Go to bqa.org for details. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson and Dr. Bob Taylor. Uh, I'm from Kansas State University. Dr. Taylor is from, is it Lone Tree, Wyoming? Lone Tree, Wyoming. Yeah, and he's out in Southwest Wyoming, a uh, veterinarian and beef producer. And you know, we talk about the labeling, we talk about, and, and it gets back to that consumer education. It gets back to, you know, how do you, you know, I don't think people realize that you have the same marketing competition and pressures that a lot of people that, that, that the big feedlots and things like that have. Oh my goodness gracious. I, I think understanding the dynamics and the economics of the cattle industry is, is a, a life quest. And we, we face the same competitive uh, pressures that, that you do if you were still down at, at Cactus. Uh, there's fluctuation in, in availability of pasture, there's fluctuation in demand. We have a lot of uh, foreign competition and some of the big retailers, if they can buy a pound of American uh, organic versus uh, another country's organic beef, they're going to go where the money is. Yep. And it, it, it harkens back to what we talked about earlier in that, in my opinion, the American beef industry is the leader in terms of quality and health. And we, we need to understand that to produce this kind of beef, it's, it, it's costly. Whether it's conventional or if it's organic or whatever it is, if the consumer wants a really good quality product that they can feed their children and know that their kids are getting the protein that they need, it's, it's costly and uh, none of us are driving our first Mercedes. We're all hardworking, but we want that story, those people, those our customers to understand that because every year I spend a lot of sleepless nights thinking about how we're gonna market these cattle and who's gonna buy them. We've spent all year growing these babies and now it's time for them to go somewhere else. Who wants to buy them and how can we sell them such that we can continue to do the same thing the next year. And that gets back to 
we have to market our quality in this industry. That's right. I think the the mantra of buying beef by the pound is is wrong. It should be based on the quality. Now we know there are a lot of quality grades, um, uh, you know, that that are out there, but it's based on the quality of the animal and the carcass and the way they were raised that I think is important. Yep, and the eating experience and and the whole nine yards. Well, it's uh, been absolutely great to have oh, you on the show. Thank you very much. Well. I sure enjoyed it. It's fun to be here. Thank yeah, you. Thanks, right. for, thanks for being here. Okay. Folks, thank you for watching Doc Talk. Uh, we appreciate what you do. Remember, always work with your local veterinarian. And if you want to know more about what we do on the show, you can find us at www.doctalktv.com. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. Here with Dr. Bob Taylor, I'm Dr. Dan Thompson, and I'll see you down the road. Closed captioning brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. Doc Talk was brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals.